Welcome to this video on using Leap to upgrade a system running Oracle Linux to the next version of current release Oracle Linux. We will see how to install and use the Leap utility to upgrade the current release of Oracle Linux 8 to Oracle Linux 9, and then further upgrade again to Oracle Linux 10. The Leap utility is used to upgrade operating systems only. Each version of Oracle Linux has its own version of the Leap utility package. The process is defined in two stages a pre-upgrade stage which verifies if the system is ready to be upgraded and the upgrade stage which performs the system upgrade. It's important to always read about the supported systems, kernel prerequisites and pre-upgrade checks in the Leap documentation for the specific Oracle Linux version you want to upgrade to. These links take you to the Leap documentation for upgrading to Oracle Linux 9 and 10. Leap can be used to upgrade Oracle Linux on-premise systems as well as Oracle Linux Oracle Cloud infrastructure instances. So let's look at upgrading our Oracle Linux 8 system to Oracle Linux 9. Before starting the pre-upgrade or upgrade, ensure your system is fully updated and make a backup or snapshot so you can restore if there's any issue with the upgrade. Shut down any running workloads as the upgrade process will carry out multiple reboots. If the Oracle Linux 8 system was previously upgraded from Oracle Linux 7, and retain the use of legacy network scripts, you must migrate these scripts, as they're no longer usable in Oracle Linux 9. Use the command sudo nmcli connection migrate. If we have any mounted network file systems, unmount them and comment them out in the slash etc slash fs tab file. They can be remounted after the upgrade. Ensure that ssh root login is disabled in the slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config file. Edit the file and comment out the entry permit root login yes or change its setting to no. If you are upgrading an Oracle Linux instance on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, verify if Oracle OS Management Hub is running on the instance. You can use Leap with OS Management Hub to upgrade the instance. If using a proxy, make sure DNF is configured with the proxy setting in the file slash etc slash dnf slash dnf dot conf. Check if there are any virtual machines running with the command sudo virsh list dash dash all. Any found to be running can be stopped with the command sudo virsh shutdown and inserting the name of the guest VM. If the system is registered with ULN, it must be unregistered. Always review the leap documentation section called preparing for the upgrade to see possible changes and settings needed for a successful upgrade. Make sure all system packages are up to date with the command sudo dnf update. With these checks completed, reboot the system. And with our system up to date, we can now install the Leap utility for our current version of Oracle Linux 8. To install the Leap package, we use the command sudo dnf install leap upgrade. We see EL8 to EL9 in the package name, telling us the package will upgrade from Oracle Linux 8 to Oracle Linux 9. We can now run the pre-upgrade process to assess if the system is prepared for a successful upgrade. The command is sudo leap pre-upgrade and we can add the dash dash help to show its options and switches. When running the pre-upgrade command, there are two command switches used for convenience, dash dash Oracle Linux and dash dash OCI. These identify whether you're upgrading with repositories for an on-premise system, dash dash Oracle Linux, or an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure System, dash dash OCI. Our system is an Oracle Cloud instance, so we use the command sudo leap pre-upgrade dash dash OCI. This process takes some time, so let's skip to the end. It finishes with an on-screen report. The process also generates files called leap-report.txt and leap-report.json and an answer file. These are all created in the slash var slash log slash leap directory. Debug information is saved in a leap-preupgrade.log file. Under the section Report Summary, we see errors and inhibitors. Any errors or inhibitors will prevent the upgrade and cause the process to exit. Here we see three inhibitors listed. There are also other severity issues listed as high, medium, low, and info, which should be addressed before upgrading, but these will not prevent the upgrade. These are all detailed in the leap-report text and JSON files. Using the command sudo cat slash var slash log slash leap slash leap dash report dot txt to view the file, it identifies potential risks to the upgrade and classifies them as high, medium, or low. A high risk entry also marked as inhibitor in brackets 
will prevent an upgrade from completing. Normal high and lower severities may not. The report provides a summary of the issues and also offers ways to resolve them. We must clear any items listed as error or high inhibitor before attempting an upgrade. For our system, we clear the first inhibitor by using the command sudo sed-i to set allow zone drift equals no in the slash etc slash firewall d slash firewall d.conf file. The two other inhibitor entries are related to OS Watcher and can be addressed in the answer file. All answer file entries must also be addressed before upgrading. Looking at the file using the command sudo cat slash var slash log slash leap slash answer file, we need to confirm true to the potential OS Watcher issue. Modifications can be made directly by editing the specific section of the file or by using the sudo leap answer command as seen in our example here. Viewing the file again, we verify the change was made. Remember that all items in the answer file must be answered and any errors or high risk inhibitor entries in the leap slash report text file must be resolved. We repeat the pre upgrade command to verify there are no inhibitors to prevent the upgrade. This check may take even longer than before, so let's jump ahead to the end of it. The report summary now shows zero errors and inhibitors. Let's confirm the system version before upgrading. We use the command uname-or to show the version is EL8 and verify the Oracle Linux 8 version with the command sudo cat slash etc slash system dash release. We now run the upgrade process using the command sudo leap upgrade and again with the switch dash dash oci. When the upgrade is complete, we also see a new report overview and files are created. After upgrading, we must reboot the system. At the end of the boot process, the utility automatically proceeds with upgrading packages, and this can take some time. When the reboot is complete, we can log in again. We check the kernel version and see it's now EL9, and verify the new Oracle Linux 9 version is also used. The upgrade process also updates the answer file, leap-report.txt, and creates a leap-upgrade.log file. These should be examined as they may include post-upgrade recommendations. Following the upgrade, it is important to ensure that the upgraded system remains in a supported state. For information and guidance, see the post-upgrade information section of the leap documentation. So that's our system upgraded from Oracle Linux 8 to Oracle Linux 9. As we will now upgrade again from 9 to 10, as per the recommendations in the documentation, there are some tasks that should be done. For example, in the DNF configuration file, we should comment out the exclude line relating to the previous leap installation. Looking at the file with the command sudo cat slash etc slash dnf slash dnf.conf and use the sed slash i command to modify it. We could also just edit the file directly. We remove any remaining old Oracle Linux 8 packages and dependencies with the command sudo dnf remove leap star. Once again, it's highly recommended to review the documentation, so for this upgrade, I've already reviewed the pre-upgrade recommendations in the Oracle Linux 10 leap documentation. I've checked and implemented any appropriate pre-upgrade modifications. Oracle Linux 10 requires the UEK8 kernel, so let's enable the ol 9 underscore uekr 8 repository so we can update our current kernel. We view the repo list on our system with the command sudo dnf repo list all and see the ol 9 underscore uekr 8 repository is disabled. To enable it, we use the command sudo dnf config dash manager dash dash enable ol 9 underscore uekr 8 and confirm it's now enabled on our system. As before, we run the command sudo dnf update to ensure all the packages are up to date, which will also update the kernel. With the update complete, before we reboot, let's set the uek8 kernel to be used when we reboot the system. To view the current kernel used, we use the command sudo grubby dash dash default dash kernel. Now we can see a list of all kernels on our system with the command sudo ls dash l slash boot slash vm lin uz star and set the kernel to be used with the command sudo grubby dash dash set dash default slash boot slash vm lin uz dash six dot twelve dot zero dash one hundred dot twenty eight dot two dot two dot el nine uek dot x eighty six underscore sixty four with the update complete and new kernel set we reboot the system 
After the reboot, we can verify the new kernel is used. To now upgrade the system from 9 to 10, we need to install the leap package specific to Oracle Linux 10. If your system used leap to upgrade earlier, it's also important to remove all the old leap components and dependencies from the earlier leap installation. So let's install the leap package with the command sudo dnf install leap upgrade. If you encounter errors while trying to install the Oracle Linux 10 leap package, refer to the documentation or error information to ensure all earlier leap related packages, dependencies and settings are removed. We can see the package name includes EL9 to EL10, informing the version being upgraded. We can now run the pre-upgrade check for our system. Help is available using the dash dash help option with the leap pre-upgrade command. And to run our pre-upgrade check, we run the command sudo leap pre-upgrade dash dash OCI. Fast forwarding to the report, we see four inhibitors listed. Let's check the leap-report.txt file to see details for these inhibitors. We see an inhibitor related to the use of legacy network scripts. These network scripts are no longer usable in Oracle Linux 9 and 10. As indicated in the report, we can migrate them with the command sudo nmcli connection migrate. Now let's look at the answer file. We earlier set the boot kernel to be the latest UEK 8 version, so this should address this question. So we use the command leap answer to confirm our response by setting it to true. All entries in the answer file must be answered. We check the answer file again to confirm our setting. And now we run the pre-upgrade again to ensure the upgrade will have no inhibitors. This will take some time, so let's fast forward through it. The report summary shows no inhibitors now. It's recommended to address the other errors, but we choose to progress with the upgrade anyway. We run the upgrade with the command sudo leap upgrade dash dash OCI and to verify the current version of our system before we reboot we run the command sudo cat slash etc slash system dash release it shows Oracle Linux 9. Now let's reboot and let the system update to the new leap upgraded version. This will take some time to complete. Reconnecting to our system we check the version and now see it's showing Oracle Linux 10. As part of the upgrade process, remember to refer to the documentation and follow the post upgrade checks and cleaning. But for us, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.